This is Gary Atensi with CNTV, and today we're in Colorado Springs, Colorado. I'm here at the Old Town Guest House. Since 1997, they have been providing a contemporary bed and breakfast and executive retreat for guests, visitors here in Old Colorado City. Um, folks, first of all, you're the new innkeepers here, relocated here to the area of Colorado. Share with me a little bit, first of all, Dave, what is it that brought you guys here to the Colorado Springs area? Well, Kim and I are brother and sister, and... Uh uh, I had been, uh, after we uh, left the University of Nebraska, uh, we each had our own careers. I, I ended up moving to the East Coast about 35 years ago uh, in the hotel business, and uh, Kim is in uh, management training, and, uh, and there are things she can explain about that and why it was important for us to find a conference center. Um, after having a, a being downsized uh, uh, last last year, we decided it was time to you know pursue some of those dreams, and uh, we ended up here in Colorado Springs. Wonderful, Kim. Let me ask you this: What about for yourself? Um, what is it that got you involved in the bed and breakfast industry? Well, for years I've been a professional speaker and professional organizer, and so I, decades ago I always wanted a retreat center. I have a master's in social work and really like helping people, <laughs> so I was always like looking for a place to have a retreat center. And in my mind, though, I wasn't worried about the rooms. I just wanted a place to speak and to help people and bring people in. Uh, whereas Dave is more about I want a bed and breakfast because he's he's the cook and he's the decorator so putting all of that together and he's worked with hotel sales and for the big hotels and marketing for years um, so we put our marketing together as well being self-employed I've marketed myself all this time so I can do my own programs here I can bring other speakers and trainers here um, to bring there so there's just a nice mix with having the conference uh, center in the basement as well as the rooms Excellent. Let me ask you this. First of all, a bed and breakfast. Why do you think it is that travelers are, are tending to favor the hospitality of a bed and breakfast versus that of a corporate America hotel stay? I think it's just kind of interesting. Uh, people that are attending a convention, perhaps, of course, will be uh, going to the one, one of the larger hotels, but you can go to any any floor in any hotel almost anywhere in the world, and they're, you're going to find the rooms to be pretty much the same at any of the larger chains. The bed and breakfasts are, are very much unique to their own neighborhoods, and they're unique to the, uh, to the history of the uh, community that they're in. Uh, we are a select registry uh, hotel, uh, one of, of about uh, 400 in the United States and five in Colorado, and uh, each of those are uh, a historic building or in a historic community. And people like it, I think, because uh, in the evenings we offer complimentary wine and snacks. People tend to uh, get to meet each other. Uh, we, did, we did have a, a funny uh, a coincidence of a couple from Scotland talking about their aunt who lived in Austin, and the couple across from them was from Austin, and it turned out their aunt lived across the street from these people. It happens uh, all the time. Uh, and it does happen all the time. That is amazing. So we're talking about a mixing and mingling. Like you said about the neighborhood, I mean, this three-story brick house was built in such a way to really resemble the neighborhood as well as that of yesteryear. Um, was that something that you think uh, attracted you as well as other people who want to come in? I think it does. Uh, for us, the location was uh, very, very important. Um, not only uh, is the guest house uh, so close to Colorado Boulevard and all the other uh, shops and boutiques and restaurants and galleries, but it's just a couple of minutes from everything in uh, in the mountains uh, through Manitou Springs. Uh, Pikes Peak is an extraordinary uh, extraordinary draw for everyone, and uh, so many of the people, first of all, enjoy the the view from all of the rooms is Pikes Peak, and. Uh, uh, the, the history of the building itself, many people have come in and said, isn't this an older building that's been renovated? And we say, no, they did a very nice job of making it look like the building that was here originally, which was originally a, a, a city hall and a firehouse before it burned down. And it was also a jail, too. There was a jail in the basement. What is nice about that is the fact that it feels like yesterday it's got a, a hospitality feel to it, but yet you're able to enjoy the amenities of today. We're talking about technology of today um, is everywhere. You've got a complete elevator that it makes it very easily accessible to get up to the rooms. Yes. Um, that's got to be great. Yeah, we've got the elevator. We've also got Wi-Fi. You know, so even though we would really want everybody to unplug when they're here and just relax, um, obviously everybody needs to be connected all the time. So we have Wi-Fi throughout the building that works. Um, so yeah, it's it's great to just have 
um, everything so nice and new. Um, the the other thing that people love here, in and the people who built it, bless their hearts, 17 years ago, um, put in water beds, and they're the kind that have the tubes so that they don't move hardly, mm-hmm. but they just move a little. And people, if I forget to tell people, they're like, I think my bed moved. It's like, no, no, it's a oh, water bed. Nice. But it's they love it. And some people have called months later to say we want to order one of those. They are so lovely. So that's even a special thing that people really enjoy is just having the water beds. Very different kind of an experience too. What's wonderful, it makes it easy to get up to your room, the elevator there, but also makes it easy to come down. Like you mentioned before, here in the dining room, the foyer, people mix and mingle. You've got a complete fireplace here. You've got computer amenities here. What, what kind of get-togethers can take place here, even for the local people who maybe want to rent this spot? Uh, we've had uh, people contact us about uh, baby showers, um, weddings, uh, weddings uh, small weddings. We can hold about up, up to 40 in the dining room if it's uh, uh, we modify the seating. Um, we've had uh, gentlemen ask us about uh, bachelor parties. We don't let, let things get crazy, <laughs> but we can have uh, private dinners in, on the lower level. We can seat uh, up to 20 people for dinner easily downstairs or uh, in the dining room uh, with uh, different setups. Uh, the family reunions are another uh, another uh, bonus, and we have people that will rent the whole inn uh, so they can accommodate the family. And we can th- the kids can stay downstairs if they like. There's a, a pinball uh, down there and uh, a games and a p- pool table, so the kids can just sort of stay up all night and not bother the parents. Uh, and it's it's a very nice private uh, environment for everyone. And and despite the fact that we're on 26th Street, which is a very busy street. This building is so quiet that we've had someone say, it's almost ghostly upstairs. It is so quiet in the evenings. And, and that's a wonderful thing, actually, to, uh, to have that kind of peace and quiet in the middle of the city. Wonderful. I mean, you mentioned before here the dining room seats quite a few there. One of the things I notice here that's uh, not really typical of a bed and breakfast is we're not talking about a, one big round table. We're talking about um, some smaller tables, which is kind of nice. Share with me how that's been enjoyed. Well, people really like that. And, and certainly in some situations, we seat people together if sure. there's just a few. And sometimes we can be full, which would be 17 people if we had every bed filled in doubles and the queens and kings. Um, and But yet there might only be six people people that come to breakfast because they went out hiking early, they had to catch their plane early, so we never exactly know how many we're having for breakfast. And um, But they like sitting separately with just two at a table and having that privacy. But we have a lot of anniversary couples on weekends and a lot of honeymooners. So it's really nice to be able to give them their own table, their own little special space, while they're st- still sitting in the room with everybody else. And <laughs> over um, July 4th weekend, and we had like some families that stayed like six, seven, eight days and just went, we were like a hub. You know, they just go yeah. out from here to all of the tourist attractions and just come home. And they like that. They said, it is like coming home. It's just so easy to be here and we can just be here. Is they would move their chairs and tables together without us. They're like, no, we want to sit together. We got yeah. to know these people the last couple of days. We're moving everything together. Go ahead. That's fine with <laughs> You know, you must have liked that because really they made an extension of their own home, mm-hmm. started moving the tables together like that. Obviously, one of the things that gives it a home-like feel is uh, breakfast in the morning. Share with us what what might we find on the menu on a on a typical breakfast? Uh, we tend to start with uh, with some kind of fresh fruit or or. or uh, and we just, it can either be a fruit cup, it might be bananas and cream, or we try to keep it seasonal and organic as much as possible. It could be peaches. This morning it was peaches and cream and strawberries. Um, it, can be, it can be bacon and eggs. Uh, we like to do dino eggs, which is uh, dinosaur. Uh, dinosaur eggs, actually, <laughs> which, which are actually uh, mm-hmm. uh, scotch eggs, which is uh, an, a boiled egg uh, wrapped in a sausage and then baked. But we serve it on a, a bed of uh, a spinach uh, along with uh, avocados and cooked mushrooms. It looks it, it does look very Jurassic Park, uh, Jurassic Park in its own way. <laughs> it's uh, well, and, and the reason we did that is because we started thinking about what's around here that we could name, like the rooms. Uh, yeah. Each one has a theme, as many bread, yeah. bed and breakfasts do. But it's like, well, locally, there's museums, right? There's yeah. the, the there's all kinds of museums and the uh, arche- archaeological museum and stuff. Yeah. It's like, well, that would be the dinosaur eggs, right? You know. Absolutely. So then we have other things like, okay, now we have to have a mining one, and then we have to have an Olympic plate. <laughs> so, you know, it's fun to have that kind of fun with it too. And people love the dino eggs because they're we don't tell them what's in it, you know. And we had a couple from Scotland and so we set it down and we just waited right by them said okay we'll let you tell us what this is and they said 
Scotch eggs. Yep. <laughs> but And most people don't know what a scotch egg is, so they wouldn't know the difference. But it's, it's really fun when they open it up and there's a boiled egg inside. And it's just very cute. Yeah. Makes me want to come here and eat <laughs> besides even staying here. Yeah. I would do that just to, for that. Have, uh, we also do a lot of uh, fresh baking every day. So it's either fresh uh, blueberry muffins or it might be... Uh, banana bread or date bars or whatever, but it's always fresh and it's warm and it's uh, new every day. Uh, and people enjoy that too. And we've had some fun on, on the 4th of July weekend. We did uh, beer floats for breakfast because we did a breakfast picnic for everybody. Um, and we, we tried to do it, uh, create themes for people uh, and just to have fun with, uh, with whatever the calendar says the day might be. So. I have, a, I have an idea that you really have a good time doing this, Dave, really trying to mix it up for folks, and, and it's nice to hear some feedback. It is. Uh, we enjoy hearing back from people. We have a lot of people, and this is not an exaggeration, almost every day someone's taking a picture of their breakfast and putting it on Facebook because <laughs> I really do go out of my way to make, make the place look good, and, uh, and we rarely have any leftovers. <laughs> Everything is gone every day. Wow. Wonderful. This is a Dave great place. Art history degree, so it goes, it <laughs> goes to use with doing the plate. <laughs> I bet. This is, this is a great place for basically a, a couple to get away, individuals, but it's also a great place for business because of the fact that not only can you have a small get-together here in either one of the top rooms, but obviously down at the bottom there, you've got capacity to do uh, some serious business conferencing. Share with me a little bit about that. Uh, this is a, well, let Kim talk yeah. about. This is really Kim's baby, and she does a very nice job at the conference center. Yeah, so we it's a 500 square foot space, and we can accommodate about 25 seated in ergonomic uh, seats with wheels, and you know can move wow. around very easily and good for your back, uh, with uh, conference tables and such. Um, as there's a projector screen, there's whiteboard, um, and about 40 to 45 people standing, moving around, and not specifically just sitting. Uh, but we also have have a video conference center uh, so instead of going through Skype to see someone and do an interview yeah. or something uh, we have court reporters court situations um, job interviews that might be from another state for a medical job or government job and so that person just shows up here and I set up the video conferencing TV situation and they dial in to the number and I leave the room and they have their interview or they have their court reporting testimony thing for a couple hours so so we get a lot of that we've had wow. several this past week a couple coming up next week um, we have a couple groups coming in in the next uh, week for half day three half day workshops and a road um, in the conference center so it's a really great uh, easy space to use and with the elevator they can bring in equipment they can just elevate it down and very easy uh, to use everything as well Wow. So basically, you're talking about a, a national and an international video conferencing. So we're talking about available 24-7 if somebody should need that. It's wonderful. Obviously, uh, business amenities down there, everything that you need as far as a projector, uh, whiteboards, the whole nine yards, like you're saying. It's also got to be kind of a great place that you can transform possibly into a small wedding reception or even any type of party down there. Exactly. And it's really fun, too, for being able to have families. I, we don't we don't market to families as far as having kids here, but that doesn't mean they don't bring kids once in a while that are very responsible kids, thank goodness. Yes, yes. Um, but certainly if we have the family reunions or family groups that get together and just, again, block out the whole place for a couple days, then that basement is available to to them uh, on that level. It's not a conference center, it's a basement. Um, and they can even have their kids sleep on our air mattresses if they want to like, get out of the room and say, we just want to go play together. Great. We'll just put that together for you downstairs and you can watch TV. There's another, just a TV down there. And they can watch TV and some videos or DVDs or whatever and have a good time. Wonderful. Um, obviously, the elevator can take us upstairs, but so can the staircase. You've got a painted staircase. is almost part of the, the journey there. Let's share a little little bit about some of the rooms. We can't touch on all of them, but share with me, uh, let's say, for instance, the Indian paintbrush. Let's start there. What, what goes on there? Uh, Indian paintbrush is the largest room. It's uh, it's actually a, almost a mini suite. It has a queen-size bed and a separate alcove uh, with a twin bed, so it's good for two individual travelers together. Um, it has uh, excellent views of the uh, uh, the, the mountains from its private balcony, and it's one of the four rooms on the top floor that has its own private hot tub. Uh, the hot tubs are uh, available all year round. They are outside on the balcony, and uh, we have uh, robes and, and, uh, and the towels for everyone so they can use them all, all year round. The second floor rooms have uh, uh, saunas, a private sauna in each room, 
They've always been calling them steam showers. It's really not an American term to know what a steam shower is, but in truth, they're, they're a private sauna in each of the best uh, each of the guest rooms. Uh, it's a, the, it fills the shower with uh, the steam, and there are seats in, in them so that everyone has a private uh, sauna. And it's really something unusual in uh, this neck of the woods. I, I don't think that many hotels in the area have private saunas in the guest rooms. So uh, the top floor is... Uh, uh, pretty much dedicated to the hot tubs, the second floor to the saunas. Uh, all the rooms have uh, queen beds, uh, except for one, the Columbine, which is a king. And we have uh, fireplaces in five of the guest rooms, so that's uh, something that people enjoy as the, as the weather gets a little cooler and there are crisp evenings. It's nice to come in from the, uh, from the sauna uh, or from the, uh, from the balcony with the hot tub and uh, enjoy the, uh, the fireplaces. Uh, there's comfortable seating for reading or conversation or... Uh, whatever and, and of course again the rooms are all private and quiet and uh, we have packages available of course with uh, with champagne and chocolates and flowers and just about anything people want to do to uh, enjoy a nice private weekend which is uh, I think important for us here because what we there are so many military people in the area uh, we offer a military discount uh, for people we do have a lot of reunions uh, that take place from people coming back from overseas which we enjoy a lot. Wonderful. So many rooms um, to be noticed there. One of the things that is unique here for innkeepers is the fact that uh, while you're waiting for your private residency, you guys have been able to enjoy every single room probably <laughs> pretty much in this whole top area. Um, that really had to be kind of a, a fun experience to learn more about each room and the experience there. Yeah. So I actually haven't gotten to every one of them. <laughs> yeah. But we, we really, we, we were so booked out for a while. We were sleeping on air, air mattresses in the conference center. Right. And it's like, okay, I, I don't think I signed up for camping. I'm not sure how this happened. But yes. Yeah, so so our, our, our residence with here within the inn should be hopefully done very soon. And we'll have our own beds and our own chairs. But, um, yeah, being able to go into each room and spend a day or two in them. And, and what we also realize is that you need to spend that 24 hours because how it looks in the day, in the morning, in the yeah. afternoon, and when it's dark are three different things. The way light shines on stuff, the way it looks, the way air conditioners work, where things, you know. So that's a good thing for us to keep doing, you know, it really helps you see what needs to change what the guest is feeling and seeing sure. and enjoying or not enjoying because it's just the way something's working or not so we certainly have been checking out all the rooms <laughs> absolutely folks we're talking about innkeepers that really have a first-hand approach in the rooms that they <laughs> offer here take a look at the bottom of the screen right there what you're going to see is their website on the website you're going to um, see some of the rates they have there you're also going to see some photos there of the rooms although we've been showing you quite a few on the screen as we've um, gone through the interview here also, keep in mind, you can check out the calendar right there and see the availability. You can book online, as simple as that. Or if you prefer, you'd like to call the 800 number or if you'd like to call the local number. Basically, on the other end, you're going to find the innkeepers that have uh, relocated to this beautiful area with um, an idea of wanting to give you somewhere that you could call home while you're here in beautiful Colorado. And um, obviously, the destinations around us are many. I mean, you can enjoy, go out in the veranda, take a look at Pikes Peak around you. You mentioned some of the places people are going here. Um, that's got to make it kind of exciting where somebody could stay here seven, eight days and it's still keep going. Right. Absolutely. There's something for people to do, uh, do here every day. And uh, we almost weekly have someone that uh, is asking if they can stay another night, stay another uh, day or two, because they've discovered so many things to do in the Colorado Springs area. And the neighborhood alone between uh, the different museums and attractions and uh, galleries uh, is enough to keep people occupied. And they could never possibly... Uh, check out all the restaurants in the neighborhood. There are just so many things to do, and uh, within minutes are the attractions of uh, of Pikes Peak and the and the uh, Garden of the Gods, which is very very popular for people. We have have them go out at sunrise sometimes just to see watch the sunrise from Garden of the Gods, and of course Cave of the Winds, and uh, just so many other attractions in the area. The Cog Railway and uh, the uh, cliff dwellings. There's just so many things for people to do that are just literally minutes awake. We truly do have, I believe, one of the best locations for visitors anywhere in the state of the Col of Colorado. We're, we're talking just uh, uh, walking out your front yard here a few feet down the road there. You've got things going on. The other thing that just happened recently is uh, the, the international bike race was just a couple days ago. Well, it, it you know, within hardly a half a block, 
we could see it out the kitchen window. And so people said, we just sat on our balcony and watched them go by. So everything is right here. It just amazes us. To, like, we don't even know. I mean, we're so, we keep saying we're on house arrest because we're just busy learning everything. We're under you know, B&B boot camp. But you just look out the window and there's all these things happening just within a couple blocks. Or, of course, the Pikes Peak, uh, the, the race you know, that was last month or so. The people from, again, Scotland had come here just for that. They were here five days just to go to that race up Pikes Peak and it's just like oh it's just down the road oh that's just down the road oh that'll be here just sit here it'll be going by any minute so it's just this amazing like I said like a hub you could just go out from here or stay right here and it'll all just show up <laughs> <laughs> that is, that is so fun to you. <laughs> yeah, absolutely well like you said basically Kim you didn't sign up for waiting in the conference room as your private residence was going to take place you did sign up though for giving people a place that they could call home while they're here in Colorado has it been fun uh, it really has. I mean, the, the the people we keep meeting are just so sweet and so fun. And I, and for me, I, I can't, I don't have experience to be able to say, would it be that tr- true in any other bed and breakfast? I don't know. But I know being a, a four and five star bed and breakfast, it sure is. Because you're also attracting a really nice group of people who are used to traveling. They're used to, to just really looking for things and finding what they need and uh, used to being uh, at, at select registry uh, inns or this calendar and they just love it. So we're really happy. Wonderful. Dave, you left um, corporate America, basically <laughs> successful career. Um, you're bringing folks um, elegance, upscale, and uh, yet hospitality. Has the journey been enjoyable? It's been extremely enjoyable. Um, I think some people have come in and they say, you know, this is something that we've always thought about as having a bed and breakfast. And I can honestly say I've been in the hotel business and advertising and, and promotion for close to 40 years. And uh, uh, in all different aspects and, and uh, in the different capacities. And yet even for myself, the reality of it is, is different than... Uh, it's not romantic. It's it's not as yeah, romantic as you imagine, and it's like saying, "I'll babysit for your kids for a while, and then and then I'll be ready to have children." No, it's not the same no. thing. But um, we have found that people are very happy with uh, with their visits here, uh, and it's we certainly enjoy doing everything we can to make people comfortable here, uh, without touting our horn too much of the responses we've been getting on TripAdvisor and bnb.com have been truly phenomenal. People are uh, giving us just rave reviews and it's just, it's wonderful for us because uh, every day uh, we, we go to, the, to either of those sites, particularly TripAdvisor, uh, and people are just saying they, they couldn't have thought of a better place to stay uh, anywhere and uh, certainly felt at home here and it makes us feel so good. Mm-hmm. Absolutely not a better place to stay. Not only great reviews or possibly a picture of the breakfast on their Facebook page or a AAA Diamond Award. It all has taken place right here in old Colorado City. Last time, that information's at the bottom of your screen right there. That is Old Town Guest House, a contemporary bed and breakfast and executive retreat. This is Gary Atensu with CNTV. And if you don't know, now you know.